Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about Venn diagram, how to construct Venn diagram, and how we're going to use it to do simple probabilities. Venn diagram is used in statistics to kind of organize the relationship between the events in the sample space. Sample space is a collection of all possible outcomes. Now, how do we construct Venn diagram? We basically use the following criteria when constructing Venn diagram. The sample space is represented in a rectangular shape. Events within the sample space are often used circles for the display. They are properly labeled with the corresponding probabilities. And most importantly, the sum of all probabilities within the rectangle must be equal to 1. Let's construct a Venn diagram with two events A and B, and then clearly shade event A. So inside of the rectangle, I have two circles. They're properly labeled A and B, representing events A and B, and then event A is shaded. That means circle A is shaded. Now let's make a Venn diagram with two events A and B and clearly shade the event not B or B complement. So not B or B complement will be outside of B. So as you see, B is not shaded, but outside of B is shaded, which part of it includes event A. Now we want to construct a Venn diagram for two events A and B, and then clearly shade the event A or B. Now, A or B basically means we have to be inside of the circles. So for that, I'm only shading inside of the circles with label A and B. Now, I want to do the same thing, but this time I want to shade the event A and B. The event A and B will be the overlap of circles A and B. So I'm shading the overlap of the two circles, which is the yellow section in this Venn diagram. Now here, the problem is to construct a Venn diagram with two mutually exclusive events and then clearly shade event A or B. So mutually exclusive events, also called disjoint events, simply means those circles, they do not overlap. So I draw the circles such that they are not overlapping, they're mutually exclusive, and then I want to shade the event A or B so I'm shading event A and or event B. Now let's construct Venn diagram with two events A and B and shade only event A. Only A. So event A only or only A 
It simply means that you have to be inside of A, but you cannot be inside of any other event. So that's why only part of A is shaded. The part of A that also belongs to B is not shaded because the problem wants event A only. Now we're going to construct a Venn diagram with two events A and B and clearly shade the event A only or B only. So A only will be shaded inside of A but nowhere else and B only will be inside of B and no, nowhere else. So the overlap should not be shaded. So as you see, A only and B only are shaded and the problem is event A only or B only. So because of or, we consider whatever that is shaded. Now let's do Venn diagram for two events A and B and then clearly shade the event not A or not B. So our desired event is not A or not B. So first I'm going to draw not A which means shade everything but A. I'm going to do not B which means shade everything but B. So you have to be outside of B for not B and you have to be outside of A for not A. Now if we superimpose these two Venn diagrams, the only region that is not shaded is the overlap. So this represents not A or not B. And since we're working with OR, we take whatever that is shaded at least once. So basically, we're considering all the shaded region except the overlap, which of course is not shaded. Now let's do the same problem, but this time not A and not B. We're going to do the Venn diagram for not A, shading outside of A. We're going to do the Venn diagram for not B, which is outside of B. We're going to superimpose these two Venn diagrams. And only the outside of the circles are commonly shaded. And I'm interested for commonly shaded because our desired event was not A and not B. So when you're working with and, you only take the commonly shaded regions. So in this case would be outside of the circles. Now this is a numerical example. We are given probability of A, probability of B, and probability of A and B. We want to go ahead and construct a Venn diagram. Now probability of A and B is the overlap, so we start with 0.15 for the overlap. We subtract 0.15 from 0.7 to get A only, 0.55, and we subtract 0.15 from 0.35 to get B only, which is 0.2. But in order to be complete with the Venn diagram, everything has to add up to 1. So because of that, we need 0.1 outside of the circles, but inside of the rectangle. Now if you were to add all the probabilities we get 1. 
Now using last example, we want to find probability of A only or B only. Well, in my Venn diagram, I'm shading A only, I'm shading B only. But because this is an OR problem, whatever is shaded will be added together. So probability of A only or B only will be adding the two numbers, one for A only and one for B only, to get 0.75. Now using the same example, we want to find probability of not A and B. So not A and B means anything but the overlap. So as you see, everything is shaded except the overlap. So we can use the Venn diagram or we can use the complement rule and probability of not A and B will be 1 minus probability of A and B. The overlap was 0.15. We subtract that from 1. So the answer is 0.85. If you were to add the probabilities in the shaded region, you should get 0.85 as well. Now in this example, we're supposed to find probability of not A or B. So not A or B means we have to be outside of the circles. Well, outside of the circle, the answer is going to be 0.1. So using the Venn diagram or the complement rule, we get probability of not A or B is 1 minus probability of A or B. The A or B would be some of the numbers inside of the non-shaded portion of the Venn diagram. Once we do the calculation, as expected, we're going to get 0.1. I hope this presentation helped you understand how to construct Venn diagram and how to use Venn diagram to do simple probabilities.